everybody. Welcome to our wild encounter today. Uh, to, my name is Becca and today I have with me Creamsicle. She is an albino rat snake. So as a lot of you may have heard, um, that non-primate mammals have shown signs that they are able to um, get the coronavirus. So we have been following the CDC's recommendations with all of our people and primates, but now because of this we are following it with all mammals. As you can see here, Creamsicle is a snake, so she is a reptile, so it is okay for me to take off my mask. Our, our monitor, uh, Whitney, is going to keep her mask on. She's about 10 feet from me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this off so you guys are able to hear me a little bit better. So as I said, this is Creamsicle, and she is an albino gray rat snake. So because she's albino, she has this cool orangey color. Um, if she was in the wild, though, that is something that would not be very beneficial for her um, because she would stick out very, very well. So she would not um, be able to survive as long in the wild um, compared to um, in zoos with us with this albino color of hers. Um, gray rat snakes are uh, gray in color, as <laughs> their names suggest. They have dark gray or brown spots all down their body. And they are found here in Tennessee. So these guys are native here to Tennessee. Uh, they're native all around the southeastern United States and can be found climbing trees. These guys are really good climbers. Um, they're also carnivores like other snakes. So they like to eat mice and rats, uh, squirrels, birds, and even bird eggs. These guys are also uh, known as chicken snakes because they can be found, they've been found in chicken coops eating the chicken eggs, um, but they also climb up those trees in order to get uh, the eggs out of the bird nests. Uh, these guys are cold-blooded, so they can also be found um, basking on tree limbs in the sun to kind of get that body temperature back up. Um, yeah, that's so... I mean, that's kind of my spiel. This is Creamsicle. She's very great, um, but I am definitely able to answer any questions you guys have. All right. Well, we've got some fun ones coming in. First, a shout out to Becca from Maggie saying, hey. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Glad that family needs to tune in. <laughs> Uh, we got our first question here is from Tucker, age six, and he wants to know if creamsicle is a mean snake. So she is not a mean snake. Snakes aren't really mean. Um, they can be scared is more what they become if they feel threatened. Um, so rat snakes actually, if they feel threatened, they'll kink up. So they kind of make like a whole zigzag body through them, um, and they'll actually beat their tail on the ground. This is kind of uh, similar to a rattlesnake. Um, but they're not really mean. They're more scared of you, or yes, they're more scared of anything bigger than them than we are of them, um, because we can definitely hurt them more than they can hurt us. And more shout outs here. We've got hello from South Haven from Stacy. Oh, hello, Stacy. We've got Lynn from Raleigh, Diana from Tampa, Florida. Wow, you guys have come from all over. I know, it's so fun. <laughs> and of course, our friendly message from Yvonne, I miss the zoo so much. Oh, we miss you guys too, for sure. So do the animals. They miss seeing everyone. And every time I walk with the giraffes, we're like, oh, person! <laughs> they uh, definitely are like especially that. Not that. Especially since I don't wear a uniform every day. <laughs> okay, we are flooding some questions from all of our kids at home. Phoebe, age eight, wants to know why her eyes are red. I'm going to switch to that table camera if you can so, try to yeah, get her over. Definitely put her face a little closer. Get a nice, nice view of those pretty red eyes. So she is albino, so all of her coloration is um, very different than a regular snake because of that. So her eyes are red because they just don't have that same pigmentation as um, other gray rat snakes do. All right. Um, Abby and Maddie, age 10 and 12, where can snakes be found? I guess rat snakes in particular. So, she, so rat snakes are actually found... Um, anywhere around uh, southeastern United States. Um, there's different kinds in different areas, but rat snakes in general can be found um, in lots of places in southeastern United States. These guys, the gray rat snakes, are found right here in Tennessee. 
So it, let's say uh, Abby and Maddie wanted to go looking for a rat snake. Where they might find one here, like just in their own neighborhoods? Um, I'm, they are very, very common. Um, so you can kind of see them out everywhere. Um, I definitely recommend staying out of their way. Um, they're de- but you can definitely look from afar if you do spot one. Um, they are pretty interesting creatures. Um, but they can really be found a lot of places because these guys are very adapted to us. Um, they, they live kind of throughout. They'll climb trees in neighborhoods. They can be found out in the scrub, or I'm sorry, the um, cypress um, areas and the pineland areas. Uh, they're, yeah, they're kind of found pretty much everywhere around here. Okay. Well, we've got Stacy asking, uh, due to her albinoism, is she colorblind? Um, that is kind of a difficult question. Um, I am not 100% sure on that. Um, rat snakes in general are not colorblind. I do not think that it affects her vision, but it definitely has a possibility to. But I am actually not 100% sure on that. It's kind of hard to, we can't really ask her. Um, so it's a little bit harder to know what she can and can't see when it comes to colors. That's fair. How would you give a snake an eye exam? <laughs> All right, Zoe, age nine, I'd like to know how long can they get? Um, so these guys uh, can get between four to six feet, uh, but they have been found to be up to eight feet. Uh, Creamsicle here is about the same uh, length as I am tall, so she's about five and a half feet long. I'm trying to see if I can't find her yeah, face. I think she's got it here. <laughs> she made like a big donut. <laughs> I see that. Well, Lauren likes to say that Creamsicle is cute and deserves lots of love. She is very cute. Snakes are actually super cute animals. Oh, 100% agreed. More (laughs) out-of-state friends here. Maria from Baltimore and Aaron from Lincoln, Nebraska, all saying hello. (laughs) Hi, guys. How are you guys? Oh, we got a little hi from Nina. I'd like to say hi to her at home. That is my youngest sister. Hi, Nina. (laughs) (laughs) I'm getting nervous to ask these things anymore for me. (laughs) All right, Brady, age six. Is that a nephew or a cousin? Nope, that one is not. (laughs) Can uh can she hear? Uh, so snakes actually hear a little bit differently than we do. They don't have ears like we do. They actually hear through vibrations. So when we, um, when animals or anything kind of stomps around next to her, uh, she can actually feel that vibration, and she can, with all of her scale muscles on her bottom, um, of her, she can actually hear where they are coming from. So they hear a little bit differently than we do. So the best thing to do if you do come across a snake, if they are in your way and you can't avoid them, it's actually best to stomp your feet because you're going to sound really, really big. And they're either going to curl up and just kind of wait for you to pass or they're going to try to get away. All right. And I just, I can tell you, we're getting more hellos and greetings to you in Creamsicle <laughs> than we are questions right now. We've got hello from Maddox, Titus, Warwick, Bellatrix, and Leo from Buffalo, New York. Hello, everybody. I look forward to that Von Trapp family video coming up. (laughs) And we got another Melissa. Hi from Plant City, Florida. We love the snake's name. Yes, it's very fitting. She definitely looks like a creamsicle. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Erin Fort would like to know, how long is she currently and is she full grown? She is full grown and she is about five and a half feet. So she is a pretty long little snake. Um, But yes, she is full grown. Got some friends on YouTube here. Lucy age eight says hello and wants to know what their natural habitat is. So these guys like to hang out in kind of pineland areas. Uh, they, they're adapted to live in urban areas where we live. Uh, these guys can actually kind of live pretty much in any kind of area as long as it has the right climate for them. Um, but they can definitely adapt pretty easily because these guys are really awesome climbers. So anywhere they can, they're actually, um, we've actually been told that they can actually climb brick walls. That's how good of climbers these guys are. Um, So they're definitely adapt to any kind of environment that they are um, in. That is so cool. A snake that can climb. Is that very common? Can most snakes climb trees? Uh, There's definitely a lot of snakes that can climb trees. Uh, The brick wall thing, that's pretty impressive in my opinion. That's not an every snake kind of thing. All right. So everyone knows. Expert climber here. <laughs> uh, Michelle on YouTube would like to know how old is Creamsicle and how long do rat snakes usually live? So Creamsicle is actually four years old. She's going to turn five in December. 
these guys can live about 15 to 20 years um, in the wild and in human care they are actually able to live over 20 years. Uh, there's no exact number in human care, uh, but these guys can definitely live um, past their 20s in human care. So we do have a familiar question for you, Becca. A Benjamin and Emily like to know, why are you wearing gloves? So I am wearing gloves because of all the, the, um, of the CDC recommendations about the coronavirus. Um, we wear gloves around all of our animals now to help prevent the spread of anything to other keepers that might happen to be touching creamsicle on the same day. We wear gloves, we sanitize everything all the time, and we definitely always wear our masks around any kind of mammals that we're going to be in contact with, including one another. Well, as a, your coworker, I appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> Let's keep on rolling. We've got so many questions pouring in. Finn, age six, how does creamsicle smell? How does she smell? So she actually uses this really cool way that we don't get to do. So if she likes to face the camera, we'll see. I'll spin her a little bit. Um, but if you notice, she's actually flicking that tongue out that she has. And that is how snakes smell. They smell using that cool tongue. Um, they are forked. So when they flick it out, and depending on which um, side of the tongue that they touch, that smell particle will actually let them know which direction the smell is coming from as well. So she is very curious today. She has that tongue constantly flicking out because this is a new little space for her to kind of explore and hang out. So she's getting lots of different scents today. All right, we got some more hellos here. Uh, Katrina, hello from Columbus. Oh, hello. Oh, and Silas, age eight, wants to say that he loves snakes and he really likes her name. Yes, snakes are very cool. That, oh. <laughs> and her name, her name is definitely very fitting for her little orange color that she has. All right, McKenna wants to know if she makes a slithering noise. So she does not actually make noise. She is very, very good and stealthy. Um, so they don't really make noises when they're sliding around unless they're sliding through something that may be uh, like leaves or branches that might rustle. Um, so you could hear them coming kind of like that, uh, but her self does not actually make much noise. All right, we've got uh, our regular viewers here, Caitlin and Ian. They want to know how often do they shed their skin? So snakes shed about one to two times a year. Um, it does depend on the snake, uh, but most snakes, um, sometimes they can shed up to three, like every three months. Uh, but most snakes, it's just one to two times a year for their, when they're growing a little bit. All right. Uh, Maria wants to know, is the snake, does, it, does the snake carry poison? I guess I want to know if it's poison or rhythmus. So that is a very good question to ask. Uh, snakes can't act, aren't actually poisonous. They're venomous. The difference between being venomous and poisonous um, is poisonous. You have to eat it um, to get that, those toxins, whereas venomous, they bite you. Um, so creamsicle here is not venomous. Uh, if she was venomous, we would be doing a lot different um, handling procedures uh, because they are definitely um, a little bit more dangerous to work with uh, just because of that um, venom that they have. But they are all super cool um, and very, very interesting when it comes to snakes being venomous. And as usual on Twitter, which is where we always get our jokesters, a uh, friend <laughs> here says, OMG, is that real? Yes, she is definitely real. If she wasn't, she was moving around like this, I'd be a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we do have some friends just tuning in. Uh, maybe let's get that introduction just one more time. Sure, definitely. So this is creamsicle. Creamsicle here is an albino rat snake. So uh, rats, gray rat snakes uh, are usually gray in color. They'll have dark gray or brown spots all down their backs. So creamsicle doesn't really have any of those spots and is orange because of that, uh, because she's albino. Um, they are found here in Tennessee. They're uh, native to se the, I'm so sorry, <laughs> the southeast uh, United States. So they're found here in Tennessee and neighboring states. Uh, they're very, very, very good climbers. Uh, they've been known to actually climb up brick walls, which is very impressive. I definitely could not do that. Um, <laughs> so she is a carnivore, just like 
snakes in general. They're all carnivores. So she likes to eat lots of mice and rats, squirrels, birds, and even bird eggs. So they'll actually climb up those trees to get into those birds ne bird nests to eat their eggs. Um, they can also be called chicken snakes because they have been found in chicken coops going after the chicken eggs. Um, so yeah, there's lots of very interesting. She can grow uh, between, gray rat snakes can grow between four and six feet. Uh, there have been some that have been measured um, at eight feet long, but she, herself um, is about five and a half feet right now. So she is full grown. Um, but yes, that's, that's about it. That's, uh, that well, is creamsicle. <laughs> sticking to that, uh, sticking to that diet you were talking about, we mm -hmm. do have Mila, age five, wants to know what is creamsicle's favorite food. So here she gets mice. She loves to eat her mice. She'll get two adult mice uh, every two weeks. That she loves to scarf down. Those are her favorites. All right, um, Becky, would like to know, does she have scales? She does have scales. Um, she's actually has keeled scales, which means they're a little bit um, r risen up. Uh, compared to other snakes. Um, so she has these nice cool scales that lift up a little bit so they form more of an armor than a smooth surface so she's a little more bumpety. Um, but yes she does have scales. Just more friends pouring in here. We've got Bentley from Bountiful Utah saying hi. Hello. <laughs> Let's see they're coming through here. Oh Cream so you have so many fans. Caitlin just thinks you are so cute. She's super cute for sure. And Anaya wants to know, uh, does she bite? Well, anything with a mouth can bite. Uh, snakes will not try to bite you. You are way too big um, for them unless they feel threatened. So the best thing to do if you do come across a snake is to just kind of give it their space. Um, let them do what they're trying to do. If you do have to go towards them because they're in your path, the best thing to do is actually to stomp your feet and sound really, really big because they can feel those vibrations, which is how they hear. So because you're going to sound super big, they're not going to want anything to do with you. Um, so snakes or anything really, well, biting is mostly the last defense. They don't want to bite you because it's kind of a waste of energy for them because they don't, they can't eat you. <laughs> That's fair. Well, Lucy, age eight, wants to know, uh, how heavy is she right now? Um, I actually am not 100% sure on that. Um, she can't, she is a pretty thin snake because she is super good at that climbing. Um, I just don't happen to know her exact weight at the moment, but I can definitely find that out. All right, we have some more friends here. Hello from Crestview Elementary. Oh, hello. <laughs> Another hi from, a, looks like from Nicholas. Hello, Nicholas. Oh, yeah. Go Team Slytherin if you're a Harry Potter fan. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Yes, Harry Potter. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go back to some of those climbing skills we talked about. Gloriana, age 11, wants to know, how do they climb those brick walls? I mean, they have so, no legs, no feet, no nails. They don't, but because they are so muscular through their whole body, they can wiggle around. Um, it also helps that she herself is very adapt to climbing, so she enjoys attempting to climb anything that she can. Uh, so these guys can use all of those nice muscles that they have to kind of grip on, but not really grip on. Uh, they're more used for like the balance aspect or maybe to sp t tangle around some branches to help escalate themselves. Um, anything like that. All right. We got a friend on Twitter here. Three down, two up. Have you ever been bitten, Miss Becca? I have not. Um, I have formed a very good relationship with all the animals that I handle, um, so I have not been bitten. Uh, I also take a lot of precautions to make sure that they, the animals are comfortable, I am comfortable, we're all comfortable and safe. <laughs> I'm glad to say that the moderator here has also not been bitten yet. <laughs> Whoosh. All right, Nicholas, age seven, how many eggs does she lay at a time? So rat snakes can lay from 60 to 30 eggs in one clutch. Um, it does totally vary, um, but they they lay quite a bit, that's for sure. And they said clutch, is, I guess that's one sitting? Yep, like one sitting. So like I gotcha. a clutch is like one big group of eggs at a time. That's a lot of eggs. Yes, it is. They are definitely very good at it. <laughs> we got some more uh, diet questions for you. They Gus like to know, how often does Crimsicle eat? And Jane wants to know, does she ever eat tacos? So, uh, <laughs> 
I don't think she would enjoy tacos. That'd be pretty hard for a snake to be able to eat a taco. Um, I enjoy tacos, but I don't think Creamsicle would. Uh, Creamsicle, uh, actually, here at the zoo, she eats uh, mice. So she'll get two mice every two weeks, um, and then she'll scarf it down. As you know, she doesn't have any hands, so I don't think a taco would be super easy for her to eat because she can't really hold it and bite it like we can. Um, she actually, snakes um, kind of unhinge their jaw um, at their chin area, so they kind of walk in their prey um, like that. So I don't think a taco would be the best thing to feed her, but she does love her mice. All right, that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> no Mexican nights for a creamsicle. This is always a fun one I like, but when people ask this kind of things about, you know, they assume reptiles have no personalities. Mm -hmm. Catherine would like to know, does she know, know and recognize you uh, like a cat or a dog with their owner? She definitely knows, um, I wouldn't say possibly like me specifically. I don't know if she can tell us all apart. She definitely has um, the ability to know that we, she's, we're familiar to her. Like she knows that she knows us because we all do um, take care of her so well. Um, so she does definitely know that she is safe with us. Uh, we've gotten her very comfortable. So I would say that she knows us compared to maybe somebody else. Um, but they definitely, she's definitely pretty comfy with us. She is clearly very relaxed just laying here on the table. <laughs> I, I can see it. she's just chilling <laughs> over there. Uh, Jagger and Skylar want to know if they make good pets. So these guys probably wouldn't. Um, they are super long snakes. Uh, they can get pretty big, so they're not the best pets. Uh, there's definitely types of snakes you could get as a pet, but you want to make sure to do a lot of research because they do take a lot of care. There's a lot of needs that they need, um, and you definitely want to do the research on what kind of snake you're getting because you definitely want a smaller snake compared to someone like Creamsicle here who can get about six feet long. So that would not be the best pet to have. All right, we're getting a lot more hellos here. Hi from Julia in Florida. Oh, hello, Julia. <laughs> We've had a few friends ask uh, right here, Brentley at age six, are albino gray snakes rare? They are. Albinos, albino rat snakes are very rare. Uh, these guys wouldn't survive very well in the wild because of their coloration. Gray rat snakes have that nice gray coloration to them to kind of help them uh, not stand out, whereas Creamsicle here stands out pretty well because she is that bright orange color. So these guys are not found um, in the wild very often because they wouldn't survive very long. Well, following up on that a little bit more, Duncan and Phoebe still want to know if she could figure out how to camouflage herself even though she's albino. So she cannot change colors. Um, so she herself could not uh, really figure out a way to camouflage. Maybe if she was in some bright yellow orange flowers she could camouflage, but herself probably wouldn't think to go, oh hey, I'm an orange color, I'm gonna go hide in these orange flowers. Uh, that's not necessarily something a snake thinks to do. Um, so they kind of rely on those natural colorations that they have to be able to not have to worry so much about the color that they are. And sticking with that same idea, uh, Jacob H10, do they come in different colors? I mean, gray rice, think are they just always gray and then occasionally albino or? So there is the albino option where <laughs> they are this bright orange color, but like I said, that's not very common. Uh, gray rat snakes, kind, they can vary, but in like the shade of gray they are, uh, they do have either gray or brown spots all down their bodies uh, that can definitely differ between individual snakes but they are all gray that's why they have that cool cool name that t lets you know what color they are okay we've got some more sweet hellos for you we've got hi from lily grace hello lily hello from tennessee we love watching the zoo every day zachary h6 oh good i'm glad we love doing this stuff and we've got our friend who's uh, obsessed about snakes and tacos still kind of making some silly comments. And <laughs> I'm sorry, James, I don't to tell you, she's not eating a taco, yeah, man. We can't give her a taco. She wouldn't be able to eat it very well. So Atticus, age eight, wants to know, how often um, are these particular snakes seen in the wild? So these guys are pretty common, especially here in Tennessee. Um, they're one of the most, I mean, they're very abundant. Uh, th they're really only... Um, Kind of conservation issue is actually us as people uh, because 
people do have that fear of snakes where the first thing that they think to do is to kill it. That's actually not the most helpful thing uh, because these guys actually help us out a lot by keeping down rodent populations. And rodents like rats and mice can actually carry diseases that we can catch. So these guys help us out a lot by keeping down those populations. Um, so they are found pretty common here. Um, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we definitely want to make sure that we're doing our best to kind of just give snakes their space so that they can help us out in the cool ways that they do. What, do you, what is the saying here? You see a snake, take two steps back and everyone's going to have a great day. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Okay, we're going to keep on going here. Another friend from Becca. We miss you here in Florida. Oh, I miss you guys too. <laughs> Christine would like to know, was Creamsicle born in the zoo or was she rescued? Um, she, I, I'm not, she, but I know she was born in captivity. Um, she wasn't born, I'm not 100% sure if she was born at this particular zoo, but she was born in a zoo. Okay. Uh, Laya, age seven, wants to know if Creamsicle has big teeth. Um, she does have uh, those nice long teeth that most snakes do. I don't know what you consider big, but I think they're pretty big. <laughs> I guess compared to maybe other snakes, is maybe she's asking. She's pretty, she's pretty average. Based on her head size, her teeth are very normal. Oh, okay. Um, Jeffrey would like to know, if she did have babies, what are the chances her babies would also be albino? So it is probably not very likely. Just because she's albino doesn't actually mean um, that all of her babies will be albino. She definitely could definitely have some albino babies because she is albino. Um, but that's not necessarily something that all of her babies will come out. So um, it is a recessive trait um, okay. as the genes. So it's more common for um, them to be that gray coloration to help them blend in than this cool orange color that she is. Now, do you know if Creamsicle's ever had any, uh... Creamsicle babies? herself has not had any babies. Okay. Um, some more questions here. we got Katie. Um, are there any other albino animals at the zoo? Not totally sure, actually. I, I'm actually not 100% sure on that. I don't know, but I can definitely find that out. That's a tough question, later. Katie. We do have over 4,000 yeah. animals here. There is a <laughs> lot of animals here to keep track of, so I'm not 100% sure on that. But Although we do have some keepers watching, so if y'all happen to know of one, yeah. please leave it in the comments for us. <laughs> uh, let's see. We're going through the rest of these questions. I'm going to check over here on YouTube. Mostly Twitter is just a lot of silly things. Um, <laughs> I think this is a good time to also talk about where Creamsicle lives. You know, a lot of people are going to look for her in the herpetarium, which of course is not where she's going to be yeah. at. So there is actually a gray rat snake in the herpetarium, but there, she, that rat snake is not albino, so that's that normal gray coloration that they have. Um, Creamsicle here is housed with the rest of our ambassador animal collection, so she's actually held behind the scenes. Um, she comes out for education purposes. She loves to help out us um, inform other people, so she really likes doing shows. Um, she likes going and doing encounters like this, um, encounters in person, things like that. So the, because these guys can get so close to you guys, uh, we keep them behind the scenes so that their interaction isn't as long. Um, but they definitely like to help ed educate everybody else. Okay. And Hunter, age 11, would like to know, um, is there a special name for baby snakes? Um, I mean, they're just kind of little baby snakes. You can call them noodles if you want. They kind of look like little noodles. Is that your official scientific term, noodles? <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Guys, we are getting towards the end of our segment, so I apologize if we didn't get to your question today. I'm going to keep scanning through here, see if anything else. Uh, Jim, we do see your question about being open. There's no set date yet right now, but we're just watching that stay-at-home order and making decisions from there. Keep an eye on social media for more information. Let's see. We're going to keep going through. We're getting a lot of uh, more hellos and how fun they're having here. Um, Glad you guys are enjoying it. We like to do it too. We right. definitely miss you all. I think a, a common question we haven't asked real quick, and we'll make this our last one before we say goodbye, um, are her natural predators. A lot of people have been asking about yeah, who are so her predators. She, her predators are mostly hawks, egrets, and foxes. Um, that's mostly what kind of hunts rat snakes uh, because they can actually kind of catch them. They're pretty big, so it's not the most common thing, but they can definitely, their predators are adapt to get them. 
which is pretty cool. Um, thank you guys all for coming. Uh, make sure to tune in tomorrow for our next wild encounter. Um, thank you guys. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.